duckies, Andy here. Elgato have sent me their 4K Pro absolute beast capture device. They've actually released two capture devices, the 4K Pro, which is the internal card, and the 4K X, which is the external one. And there are similarities and there are differences. And this isn't one of those videos. But Epos Vox, literally the stream professor, has got all the ins and outs. Because I don't want to sit here and pretend I know the ins and outs of what's going on. Because HDMI is just complicated. Like, there's so many different... Just It's just mind-boggling. But he has got an incredible video, which I'll leave in the links below if you want to find out more about the two different cards. This video is going to be about setting up the 4K Pro, getting it installed, and then getting it working inside of OBS. Because Elgato do have their own capture software, which is awesome. There's a lot of great features in there. But I'm going to be showing you how you can just use OBS without having to use any other capture device. Because I'm an OBS man, and I think everybody that's subscribed to this channel is an OBS user. If you are subscribed to this channel and you're not an OBS user, let me know in the comments because I, I, I want to know about that. And if you're not subscribed, get subscribed. So let's just fire into it and I'm going to go and put it in my dusty PC. Diving directly into the unboxing, which never goes according to plan, there is the actual card itself and a braided cable. The card itself is actually heavier than I originally thought, but it's so small, it's beautiful. I love how minimalistic it is. The braided cable is stunning. And I must say, with Elgato's packaging, everything is cardboard. There's no plastic, other than the plastic shield on the card, which, yeah, that makes sense, right? Anti-static. So getting installed, we need to take the side panel off our PC, and we need to look for a free PCIe card. And Dum Dum here has accidentally forgot that he's only got two slots on his machine, so I need to get rid of this old thing, which is a USB interface, and... It is very dusty. Installing it is super easy. It just slots into your PCIe port, which is just, it's literally just slide it in. It's so easy to do. And then depending on your case model, you might have to tighten up a screw at the side like I've done, or you might not. Sometimes there's little clips. Obviously every case is different, but as long as you've got a spare PCIe port, then there's absolutely nothing to worry about. Once all done and you're happy, you can slap your side panel back on get it all screwed in and ready to go. Next, we need to connect whatever device we want to be putting into the capture card. So there are two ports on the back of the capture card, one in and one out. Your out is obviously a pass-through that you can send to any TV monitor. I'm going to plug my PS5 into the in. So I'll plug in the beautiful 8K braided cable into the in port and then pass it around to my PS5. Obviously, cable management is always top priority because it just makes everything a lot easier to manage, right? And then the other end of it, we'll just slap into the back of the PS5 and we're all good to go. Just fire up the old Quattro and we're all good to go. Once we've got all your card installed, we need to make sure we've got all the drivers and everything, all the software that we need to get it to run. So we can jump to the Elgato website. Again, these links are in the description. And this is their download page where you can see all their different pieces of software. And the one that we need is the 4K capture utility, as you can see just here, compatible with the 4KX and the 4K Pro and press download. So this is a whole capture utility with a ton of different features in there. I'm not gonna be covering the actual uh, software of this in this video, but I might do a video later on in the future. So please let me know in the comments if you want me to cover that. The beauty of it though, is that it will install all of the relevant drivers for you. So it's just literally plug and play. So I would recommend downloading that. For you tech wizards out there, if you don't want to use it, you can actually download the hardware drivers manually for each thing just there without having to use their software. But I would recommend it. There's some great features in there. Once it's all downloaded and installed, you can fire it up. And hopefully we should see some sort of input. It'll say one moment and then hopefully if everything is up and running and your PlayStation's turned on, obviously, we should see some output just there, which means everything is good to go. So like I say, there are a ton of features inside this software that you can have a little hunt around. You can use it to uh, do live recordings. It's so nice. Literally, there's so many different things in there that you should have a look at. But we're not going to focus on that. We're going to be focusing on OBS. So let's close this down and we're going to go to OBS. So inside OBS, things can get quite complicated quite quickly. 
So the first thing that I want to know is the fact that you need to take into account so many different types of resolution. So the first one is your canvas size, which is this big area in the middle of OBS. This is what is going to be sent to your viewers. And you can check that by going up to file and settings and then go into video and you'll be able to see your base canvas resolution and your output. So your base canvas is what you're seeing right now, this preview inside of OBS. And then the output is what is being sent to your viewers. So the maximum resolution that they'll be able to watch in. I usually like to make sure these are the same because then you don't have to mess around with downscaling or anything like that. For instance, if I change this to 1920, I do have options for downscaling, but again, that's adding more, more system resources that don't really need to be there. So I usually set the base canvas and the output exactly the same. But again, this is completely personal preference. So first off, I'll just show you in 1080. So I'm going to change the base canvas to 1080 and the output to 1080 as well and press apply, press OK. And that is going to resize this box in the middle of OBS. Next up, I need to add the video capture device. So I'm going to go to sources, press add and go to video capture device and give it a name like 4K Pro, press OK and we'll be able to select a device. So scrolling down, you'll see Elgato 4K Pro. If you're not seeing it there, that must mean there's something a little bit wrong with the driver or anything. There's a lot of troubleshooting steps that Elgato have got on their website and I'll leave that link in the description as well. So as you can probably see, it'll add it and this is huge because right now my PS5 is outputting a 4K signal and obviously this is 1080. We have options now. We could technically just resize this and then cool, that's it, it's done. But this actually compresses the image and I don't think it gives the best quality. So the best thing to probably do is get everything to match up. So rather than doing the device defaults, I'm just going to undo this so it goes back huge again. I can go under resolution and go to custom. So we can tell the Elgato 4K Pro to change the resolution to what we want. So I'm going to go to the drop down and you'll see 1920 by 1080. I'll select that and then now it fits directly in this box. So we are now telling the 4K Pro to match that resolution for us. And we can obviously do the FPS as well. So if we wanted a 30 FPS game or something like that, we can tell it to do that or we can up it to 60 and it'll be a lot more fluid. Once you're happy, you can just press OK and you're all good to go. That's it. Now you can press start streaming, do whatever. But if you are wanting to increase your quality to, uh, I don't know, 4K or something like that, it's usually better to make sure OBS is outputting 4K, right? So we go back up to file, to settings, and then we can go to video. And under base canvas, we can go to the drop down and you'll be able to see, I don't actually have 4K because I don't have a 4K monitor which is not great, but not many people know you can actually just type in here. So if I type 3840 by 2160, that is 4K. And then on the output scale, I can just leave at 4K as well. And they match. Again, if I don't want to output 4K, I can actually scale it down. But again, you're getting OBS to do um, the downscale and you do have options, but Again, that's using system resources that you probably don't want to be using. So I'm going to leave it at 4K just here and I'm going to press apply. And now my canvas has gone huge. So I can resize the canvas and you'll see this 1080 is a quarter of the size. If I go back into the video capture device and then go to the resolution, I can go to the drop down and turn on the 4K version leave it on 60 fps press ok and now we have got the 4k signal in obs ready to go ready to output as a 4k as well looking super sharp and super smooth something else to know is all the new consoles are starting to let you change your resolution on them as well so right now if i go to settings on the ps5 and go down to screen and video i can check the current video output signal as you can see it's sending a 4k signal at 60 hertz so 60 frames a second 
what I can do is actually change the resolution manually. So if I wanted to lock the PS5's output to 1080 or maybe 1440, depending on what I'm streaming at, then there is no downscaling or anything like that needed. Something to note is if you are using this pass through because you're wanting to view it on your monitor or your TV at 4K, you obviously don't want to be outputting from your PS5 at 1080, okay? Just remember that. But that's why all these features are there for downscaling and upscaling. So good. There you have it. We have had the 4K Pro installed. If you do run into any issues, there are so many support documentation on Elgato's website. So I'll leave a link to that down below. But it's pretty much plug and play. Obviously, make sure you've got all your stuff updated. Otherwise, you will run into an issue because it won't pick it up like dumb dumb here did just don't be like me don't be like me just do it right first try right that's why i make these videos let me know anyway which you went for if you're trying to decide on which one the 4k pro or the 4k x i'm or more all is i love hearing what you guys have got to say and i will hopefully see you in the next video if you've got any questions about it you know where i am you can catch me on twitch at twitch.tv forward slash andy lippy all my links are down below all right put your rock over the stone i'll see you in the next video much love